Welcome to the Krista Escamilla Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Krista Escamilla Show. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. We know you have a choice and we're glad you're choosing to be here today. And I hope your day is treating you well. I am so excited to introduce you to our special guest today. Visiting with us here in Midland, Texas is Stephanie Miller. She is the owner of Inertia Health and Wellness, and she's also a physical therapist for Inertia Pelvic PT and my neighbor and friend. Thank you, Stephanie, for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really delighted to be here. I'm so excited for you to share your story because I think what you do is truly amazing. And I, it's something that we need to talk more about. And so we get to do that today. So tell I'm me, so delighted. how did you get to become a pelvic therapist? Well, my journey to physical therapy is a bit of a long story. Um, I was an owner of an Irish dance school for 15 years. And Dancing loved true passion that you know, I felt yes. like I was gonna do it my whole life But dancing brought me lots of injuries my back my hips my knees ankles you name it right. And after multiple visits to physical therapy, I started feeling this calling to do something else And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna go back to school start at the community college if I fail out of the basics Then I'm just it was it was a great idea. I'm gonna move on with my life but I did my tester semester got all A's and then did my journey of community college, then I got my bachelor's degree, and then I went to PT school. And while I was in PT school, because I've worked with dancers for many mm -hmm. years, I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to work with dancers, you know, I'm really going to help them be the best and, and reduce chance of injuries. Because it's hard on your body. Dancing it's, is, it's tough. It's tough, uh, on, it's tough body, on the body. Sure. And uh, while I was in PT school, I actually developed some bladder issues. And so that introduced me to the world of pelvic physical therapy, which is a secret world nobody <laughs> knows about. Yeah, why Why do you think nobody wants to talk about the pelvic floor? <laughs> because it's, it's taboo, you know, who wants to talk about pee? You know, who wants to talk about poop and right. normal bodily functions? And so when you have an issue, Issue, you don't know where to go and lucky for me we had a therapist come in and talk about bladder issues similar to the ones I was suffering from so I said all right I'm, I'm gonna try some of these techniques she talked about and after that I was hooked I, I just wanted to learn everything about it so I requested to do a clinical so I did a three-month clinical with a board specialist in women's health and oncology and after that I was totally hooked and I said I want to do this I initially did not want to do pelvic because I knew I'd have to talk about those awkward things. Right. I talk with all my patients about pee, poo, and sex. Um, and that's not something that's, you know, comes naturally, especially with my upbringing. Right. Um, it's so usually that, the hush hush. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, took don't... me a little while to get comfortable with, but realizing that you can empower people with education and just being that person that can listen and give answers. So it's been, it's been really awesome journey. But I think that makes you a great advocate for it because you know that it was, you know, it was like, Absolutely. it was this, the subject nobody wanted to talk about growing up, right? Yeah. But now you know, hey, it, it happens to everybody, you know, mm -hmm. and it's something we all need to talk about. And who better to talk about it than someone that's been through it before? Because you Absolutely. said you had your own, yeah. you know, issues that, that kind of led you to this. And I think that's awesome that you followed that because you know I always think when we're growing because I had a dance background as well mm -hmm. and we both were dance teachers yes. you did the river dance type yes. dancing Irish which is dancing. I love that I did more like the traditional tap ballet jazz gymnastics kind mm -hmm. but still very very similar backgrounds your body is um I mean the thing is it takes a toll on your body when you're doing dance or any kind of sports and athletics mm -hmm. um but then you don't know what to do with it once you get that injury how did this lead to you then opening up your own wellness center here in Midland, Texas? Because I know it's kind of a journey then getting from, uh, is it Pennsylvania? How did I get here from, from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And we're so glad you're here. Welcome. We're so glad you're Thank here. Thank you. Well, my husband got an opportunity to work for the Kent companies here. He loves working for Bell. Great team there. Yes. And he spent a year convincing me that Midland would be a great place for us to have our home and raise children and um, also to start a practice. And right. there were there were two PTs that were here doing pelvic and they both were, were moving because husbands oh, worked wow. for different companies that brought them to Midland and then they went off to the next place. And so I looked at that as an, op an opportunity. Absolutely. And one of my um, visions for myself as a physical therapist is to provide care for people that don't have access to care. And so when they left, I thought, wow, you know, that is one of the things that I sought off to do as a physical therapist is to be somewhere 
where the services are needed, where people don't have access to the services. I love and that. So that is so wonderful. We came down here and I said, you know what, I'm going to take a month, meet some of the doctors and start my practice. And, you know, if I see a few patients a week, I'll, I'll be happy with that. Right. And I went from 10 patients my first week to a full schedule by the next month and I've been busy ever since and I've extended my hours in order to get people in that that need the care I provide. I am so excited for you and proud of you for doing that because that is that's a big jump and it's a big step coming from a a state you you know that you you, have you ever been to Texas before that or was this your first time? Just to visit just to visit here (laughs) so no I've never been to Texas it was never on my radar right Um, but it's been a really great community um moving to a place that is business friendly Mm -hmm. and Pennsylvania wasn't as friendly to business owners. And so it was a lot easier starting a practice here and then just meeting the doctors and most of them saying, wow, like we need this here. Thank you for coming. And even hearing that from patients, oh, I didn't know we had a a PT here that does that. So that was really neat. Fantastic. And we're talking, we're going to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the body and and give some tips coming up a little bit later. But first I want to talk about the, the, the building of the business process. For those of you who maybe are not familiar, um, the the flat belly, right? That's mm-hmm. where that's where you are now in is the old flat belly yeah. location. So right there off Midkiff, you know, you go down Wadley, you turn left, and then it's on the right hand side. You can't miss it. Um, great location, and right there next to Midland Athletic Supply, yeah. where all of us runners get our running shoes, and. Uh, I just want to talk about what it's like being a business owner because you went from, you know, being deep in the heart of the medical scene, right, Mm -hmm. and learning and growing and, and then going, okay, now I'm a business owner. What have you learned in that stage of the game? Well, fortunately for me, this wasn't my first business. I had the dance school, and then prior to that, my brother and I actually had a photography company. Oh, cool. Um, so some of this equipment looks really Oh, good. So, yeah, this is very familiar yeah, exactly, to you. exactly, <laughs> but, you know, in a past life. That's wonderful. Um, in terms of starting the business, with the smaller businesses I had before this, I had learned a lot of a lo- along the way of things that worked and things that did not work. Um, switching into medical from a dance school was quite different. Um, but I had worked at a private practice in Pennsylvania. And so I saw a lot of the flexibility that they had with, instead of being involved in a hospital or a bigger organization Mm -hmm. like that. And so I took a lot of the ideas that they had used that were working. Um, but I'm also a member of the American physical therapy association and they have a, a subgroup called the private practice section. And they have a lot of resources for physical therapists that have their own practice or want to start their own practice. So they had a resource that basically was step-by-step how to start your own physical therapy practice. How great is that? So I created my business plan, you know, back before I even moved here, 27 pages long. Um, But that really guided the process. So when I got to, okay, I'm going to market to doctors. Who are the doctors? I didn't have to look all that stuff up. That was in my business plan. Fantastic. So that was was neat. Uh, My initial uh, vision for the business was to get another physical therapist and be Midland's, you know, premier pelvic practice. Um, But in the last, actually, since the beginning of this year, I started thinking about what are other services that my patients would benefit from. And that's where inertia health and wellness uh, blossomed, Um, especially being in the space that we're at. The the building that they have is is actually called Perform. Mm -hmm. So it's about, you know, being the best that you can be. And a lot of my patients that have chronic pain, you know, a lot of what I give them is stretching and more stretching and more stretching. And that's where I came up with this idea. Um, I have a PTA student who works for me and I thought, well, what can I have her do that my pen, my patients would benefit from? Right. And so um, we got her a certification. I did a lot of training with her hands-on and have since then added a few other um, PTA students, a doctoral PT student, and other kinesiology majors to come in and, and provide a assisted stretch service. So people come in and they get stretched. Um, Which is amazing, I want to add. It feels really good. so good. And think about it, really, be honest. How, How often do you stretch at home, right? You don't, or even, you know, even if you are a runner, you maybe stretch for a couple minutes, you do, you know, a couple lunges yeah. and you're out the door and then you're done afterwards because you have to shower and get ready for work and, you know, and you've got the busyness of the day. We really don't take enough time to stretch. Yeah. And after having a stretch session, 
I felt like I had gotten an hour long massage. It was amazing. I mean, your, your body just, you don't realize how bad you need it until you do it. And then you're like, Oh, that was amazing. For sure. And we've since added a massage therapist to the team. Oh, great. Um, So we'll just be able to be that place where you can come for all your health and wellness. And we have a few other people on our, um, our, our, roster that uh-huh. we're trying to get on the team and other PT, um, a f- physician assistant and a counselor as well. So we will be the one-stop shop where you can get your pelvic PT if you need that specialty care, um, physical therapy, uh, orthopedic type physical therapy, Great. and then the massage and stretch and other self-care that you might need to, to really be the person that you want to be and perform your best. I love that. Fantastic. I think that is wonderful how you're expanding. What is the number one business tip you would give to someone that is starting their own business and and seeing that growth that you've seen? uh, What would you say to them to encourage them? Well, just from my own experience and, you know, for me, it was actually having, it's like sitting down and writing your plan Mm -hmm. because it's really easy to be like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And if I tried to do all the health and wellness things day one, I don't think I would have accomplished anything because if you have too many things up in the air, you can't do anything well. And so having that order of, okay, I'm going to do this, then this, then this. And uh, my husband and I, we love lists. We have whiteboards in our house. I know. I love that. I saw them up when we came over. These are the goals for this. These are the goals for this. And this is the timeline. So just having very, um, we call them smart goals, specific, measurable. uh, What's the A? achievable, time sensitive, realistic. It. And that way you're not just saying, oh, I want to have the biggest business in town or I want to be the best of saying, okay, what am I specifically doing? Is it realistic? How, you know, how am I planning on accomplishing this? What is the time? Um, and is it realistic? Okay. So I love smart that. goals and write them down. That's my new favorite, smart goals. Thank you. Uh, thanks for sharing that. I, lo- I love that because I think it is, you have to be realistic. Yeah. with with your goals you can't um i'll just use an example uh i want to play in the nfl right i is that a realistic goal for me no, probably not right but if it is your goal that's your realistic goal write it down and write what it takes to get there yeah, right exactly. is it realistic oh it is if you do the things that are before it yeah. oh, i love that I love that. Smart goals. Okay. You have to Google Thanks. it. I might have messed up the A. Oh, no, you're good. I'm sure I'm, I, I, got, I, got, well, I got what it stands for, and I think it is amazing. So I'm excited about smart goals. Okay, it is 10 minutes after, so we are going to uh, do our quote of the day. I have a big quote, girl, Stephanie. Um, and so I'm going to have you pull one out. We'll read it, and you tell us what it means to you. All right. <laughs> This is a really good one. What'd you get? This oh, the kind. Is, this oh. is her personal one. Oh, no. Which one is it? It says, breathe and believe. <gasps> yes. Breathe and believe. I love that. That's one of our favorites. We tell our kids that all the time, especially, especially on the golf course. You know, they're big golfers. And so good. Breathe and believe. What does that mean to you? What is that? Well... I love educating people when it comes to the pelvic floor about how our breathing can affect the pelvic floor, but our breathing also affects the nervous system. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always telling people, you know, breathe using your diaphragm, you get more oxygen into your lungs, you get more oxygen into your blood. It helps calm the nervous system so you can think straighter. Um, So for me, just always taking that moment and breathing. And then I like your belief too, is, you know, having specific realistic goals and knowing that you have the capacity to actually achieve those goals. Um, I, I believe, well, using the word believe, if you have something in mind and you keep that at your forefront, that you can achieve it. But if you don't believe that you can, you never will. So Absolutely. you have to really think that into existence. That's yes. a good one. Yeah, I'm no, I'm so one. glad you got that. And you got the kind card. Kind. Because when I see you, I feel kindness. Aww. Like I do. I feel like you Thank exude you. kindness. So I love that. You got the, it always works out this way. And I know I say that every podcast episode, but that's because it does. Like it does. every single one correlates so well to who our guest is. And we don't pre, we don't pre put these in. So I love that. That's just the way the world works. I love it. The secret. Okay. Um, you said the diaphragm. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know if you saw, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Apple or Google Play or your favorite podcast platform, thank you. Uh, but also, <laughs> you can't see what I did. Watch it on YouTube. The minute you said diaphragm, I went like this. And I sat up. <laughs> Let's talk about the body and how the body works, because I think that's so important. Um, when you say, you know, breathe through your diaphragm, what do you mean by that? Because as a, a former singer... I used to teach how to sing through the diaphragm. Yeah. How, how does that work and how does that benefit your body? Well, 
one, our diaphragm is our breathing muscle. So when you breathe using the diaphragm, you're breathing in an efficient way for your body. Unfortunately, because of the posture most of us have, you know, being on devices, typing in front of a computer, slouching at your desk, you know, all of that can contribute to how the diaphragm moves. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of why we breathe, you know, I already mentioned that. Um, One of my things I see all the time, especially in my female patients, is we're trained to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know, society has said, oh, we suck in the tummy. And when we suck in the tummy, we breathe up in our chest. Mm -hmm. And that is not the most efficient way of breathing. Breathing into the diaphragm is a three-dimensional breath. And so I tell people to think about breathing into the lower rib cage. And you get an expansion of your belly. Oh, yeah. And if you do that a few times. It feels like you feel. You get euphoria. It's Mm -hmm. it's wonderful. That is awesome. I love that. Now, let's let's move. You mentioned about the body. Yeah. Now, how does that affect the the pelvic floor and the body and then and everything else, how it works? So when we breathe, for those of you that are watching, this is our diaphragm. When we breathe, the diaphragm comes down. The pelvic muscles come down. When we exhale, they come up. And so when I work with people that have pelvic pain, they have a lot of tension in their pelvic pain. And then if they're not breathing in an optimal Mm. way, they're not getting that mobility of those muscles. So sometimes when people are in a pain, the first thing I do is say, okay, well, let me see how you breathe. Like let's train your body to do it the correct and efficient way. In terms of how everything is connected, you know, I I consider myself a pelvic physical therapist. A lot of PTs that specialize in the bladder and pelvic floor and pelvic pain, they call themselves pelvic floor PTs. Um, And I used to do that when I first got out of school because that was the trend. But for me, I don't like to look at just the pelvic floor because it's a very small group of muscles. It creates like a little trampoline at the bottom. Um, It's very small compared to other bone structures Mm -hmm. and muscles and joints. And if you just go to those muscles and say, that's where my issue is, but you don't look above and below, you miss things. And so I often have people that come to see me, you know, just for, you know, I pee my pants when I cough and sneeze. And which is very common if you've had children. Uh, it's very which it, and i don't know all the statistics common but, not normal right <laughs> yes common not normal and i love how you said that because i've heard you say that before mm-hmm. because when you have had children you think well this is just normal right but it, it's common not it's normal common. it's it's not normal it means the muscles are not functioning um, to perform the roles that they're supposed to perform which is sphincter control they're supposed to control the sphincters and so if they're not then you're going to have some of those concerns um but back to just how everything i look at everything as being connected um the pelvis is where I start with everyone. The pelvis mm-hmm. is the center of transmission of forces. So when you step on the ground with one foot, it comes up to the pelvis and then crosses to the opposite shoulder. So mm-hmm. if you think about when you run and walk, you've got that opposite arm swing. Right. And that's because your body is sending those forces to help you move efficiently. Mm-hmm. And if there's something off at the pelvis, that can affect your foot or knee or hip pain. It wow. can affect how you swing your shoulder or vice versa. If you start at the shoulder, maybe you had a shoulder injury or maybe you had you know a rib fracture and there's some limitation here right. that can then cause an issue over here so I really in my evaluations with my patient I do a comprehensive I look at everything how do they breathe mm-hmm. how do they sit how does the back move what is pelvic alignment because all of that can affect the issues that they're having what's the number one thing people could do today to have better pelvic health oh that is a good one <laughs> um breathing honestly really? okay. the way that you breathe um I never tell anyone, you know, always do Kegels or always stretch or always whatever, because it's never and always for anyone. Everyone's got their own individual thing. But if you can focus on breathing with your diaphragm, that's just going to make all of your systems function better together. I hear a lot of people um, complain about sciatic pain, Mm -hmm. and I I don't fully understand that. Can you explain that and maybe what some, um, some tips that people could do if they are having that pain? Yeah, absolutely. So sciatic pain often comes from, it can be a misalignment of the pelvis or the sacrum, which is the bone in the back. Mm -hmm. And what that misalignment causes is tightness in a little muscle in deep in the glutes called the piriformis. It's a little triangular muscle. It sits on top of the sciatic nerve. And so when people get tightness in that muscle, it presses on the nerve. Mm -hmm. And since that nerve innervates the rest of the leg, people with sciatic symptoms will have symptoms that go down their leg. So the the easiest thing for anyone with sciatic pain would be to stretch that muscle, stretch that piriformis and might be a little hard to demo here but if you cross an ankle over your knee okay 
and then you sit up nice and tall and mm -hmm. just hinge forward. Okay. You feel a stretch deep in the glutes. I feel it. So I that's feel stretching it. the piriformis. Okay. So anyone that has sciatic pain, that is one of the stretches I'll give. Um, and they but can do this at their desk and at work. And you can do this at I mean, your you can desk. do this anywhere. Absolutely. And what a difference that makes. Mm -hmm. See, I just, I, I feel like we don't stretch enough in life. Like, we don't. We don't breathe enough or stretch enough. <laughs> you think you're breathing, but are you really are breathing? Are you really breathing? <laughs> are you really breathing? <laughs> I love this. These are all great tips. Um, I want to ask about your pregnant and postpartum um, health therapy that you do for women because that's so important. And I love that you're here for women during that time because, um, because I mean, if, if there's ever any a time where you're really focusing on your pelvis, yeah, I mean, it absolutely. really is through the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. What do you do to support the women that are, you know, going through um, pregnancy right now or the postpartum? Well, I often see women during pregnancy if they have some type of dysfunction. So they'll start getting some back pain mm -hmm. or maybe they'll get pubic bone pain in the front or they'll start to get sciatic pain. Um, anything in that, we call it the pelvic girdle. Mm -hmm. um, they'll typically come to me because their doctor will say, oh, hey, you know, go see the PT in town. Okay. Um, but lately, I've been getting a lot of women that are hearing about pelvic physical therapy and saying, I want to get my body ready for this. Oh, um, and I fantastic. explain pregnancy. Um, and you would get this like like running a marathon mm -hmm. you know you don't just show up at the marathon and start running your best you right. know because you're not gonna be as successful as all right like if I've never run before I need to get up off my couch and you know I'm gonna just jog a half mile and I'm gonna jog a mile and once right. I'm good at jogging then I'm gonna start running and I'm also gonna pair that with stretching and what are other oh I'm gonna change my you know dietary habits make sure I'm getting enough water and I'm learning right. about electrolytes you're doing all of these things right. to get your ready body for that marathon exactly and after you run then you have a recovery period okay I'm gonna take a few days rest I'm gonna take baths I'm gonna do Epsom salt so whatever it is I'm gonna replenish my carbs the same thing applies with going through pregnancy and delivery in That's the smart. postpartum period mm -hmm. and so I will see women that say I don't have any issues yet but I'd like to recover faster postpartum. Nice. And so I will check the strength of their pelvic floor and say, okay, like there are some areas here we can improve upon. I'll teach them how to do the diaphragmatic breathing because we want the pelvic muscles to move together. And then depending on when I see them in their pregnancy, I'll teach them um, birthing positions and mm -hmm. labor positions um, because you spend your whole pregnancy being told, oh, you know, you can't be laying on your back after a certain period. And then you get to the hospital and traditionally, ladies are on their back with their legs up and that's not the most optimal position for delivery right. um, I also do a lot of orthopedic uh, manual therapy we call it in physical therapy techniques to get the pelvis more open and make sure that the sacrum which needs to move for a vaginal delivery can move in a way that they can have that successful delivery and there's other techniques right. I'll teach to help um, reduce the chance of tearing or at least minimize tearing and if the patient knows they're going to be going in for a C section for whatever reason I'll talk about um, ways to brace themselves postpartum different positionings for having a bowel movement afterwards because they say oh don't strain but they don't talk about well, what would be the best way to poop right. you know like those things you don't really think about that nobody wants to talk exactly. about I mean there is one book out there I think it's what to expect when expecting uh -huh. the girlfriend's guide to pregnancy and and I remember thinking wow nobody told me any of this <laughs> I yeah. wish I would have heard this sooner Absolutely. you know and so it's like it's it's good to hear that and to have so it's almost like you're you're a coach through the pregnancy mm -hmm. um, for your for their body Absolutely, I love that well that is fantastic I love that you're doing that as well uh, let me check our time yes okay before we ask the question of the day I want to ask you your favorite quote is there a favorite quote that you live by Yes, oh, absolutely. Good. So I'm a big fan of Stephen King. Okay. I've read like 50 of his books. Oh, and that's awesome. I read this whole series, and at the end he has this quote in his, you know, afterward comments about how mad he knows the readers were because of the way the book ended. And he said, the important thing to know is life is about the journey, not the mm -hmm. destination. And so that really resonated with me because, you know, reading that book, I just was trying to get to the end. Right. And then at the end, I was like, well, I missed the whole story. Right. And so I try to live by that here in that, okay, you know, my destination is here. But instead of being like, well, I'm just going to get to that destination. I'm just going to get to that destination and enjoying every day and enjoying every moment and every hour. And what can I gain from this today that's going to help me get to my destination? I love that because sometimes you can, you, that you, you, it can be a big blur yeah. and then you get to 
that end result and you're like well what happened what happened yeah, <laughs> yeah. How did I here? It, oh i love that that is a great quote to live by and then oh, i'll ask you a favorite book in a minute question of the day let's see what question you get <laughs> oh, this is a good one oh good what was... and you got the friendly card just wanted to show that got friendly. the friendly card which you're very friendly oh, see thank you. this is so great i love it it says what was your first job and how did it shape your career path Oh, it's a good one. So, that is a good one. Like uh, most people my age, my first job was paper delivery girl. I love that. So I delivered newspapers. Uh -huh. I had an afternoon paper, so I deliver after school, get on my bike, and a lot of my. I guess clients. I don't know. I call everyone yeah. patient. So my newspaper clients were uh -huh. older individuals. And what I was told is just toss the paper. Mm -hmm. But as I started to get to know them, I'm like, oh, well, Mr. Smith is using a cane to walk. So mm -hmm. I would get off my bike and walk to the door and, you know, put the paper down. And sometimes Aww. I'd knock on the door and be like, it's hey, here. Mr. Smith, here's your paper. <laughs> and then Mr. Smith would be like, oh, you want cookies? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm good. Thanks. You know, <laughs> and so there was one uh, lady in particular. She I actually had to do collections and so one time I went to collect and she didn't have the money and I said okay you know whatever and I went back the next week to collect and she wasn't there but her daughter was there and I just started talking with her daughter well it turns out the lady had passed away oh, and no. so I'm you know chatting with this lady for about an hour about you know her mom and, and everything and just being a listening ear mm -hmm. and you know now that I'm older I, I, I value my time I'm always looking at my wife but back then I was just like I'm here talking with this lady and, and she she needed someone in that moment mm. and she, you know she found me later in life and was like thank you so much for being there that was mm. such a tough time in my life um, so even doing something that seems mundane or something that's not making a difference in people's lives, just the way that you do it can really impact people. And so Absolutely. for me, it was making that extra step of walking to the door or saying hi to the daughter of someone who passed away. And listening. I yeah. mean, that's, I mean, because you would listen exactly. to that. And I think that is a great tip in Those business and life. I mean, with me. Yeah. Absolutely. Because that makes you a better therapist when you're listening to your patients. Mm -hmm. and, and when you tailor it to each one, because, right, each house that you threw the paper at was different, mm -hmm. right? Some of them, they just grabbed their paper from the front and they were fine. Some of them, they appreciated that you took it to the door. I love that. There's a lot of, lot of lessons. I think everybody should be a paper girl, yeah. or paper boy at one point in their Absolutely. life. Absolutely. To see, just to see what that, what that's like. And that's a great first job. Mine was pizza delivery. Oh, nice. I, was, I did not <laughs> deliver pizza. Mine, mine was close so, and different. Learned a lot in that one as well. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot. That's for a whole nother podcast. But, got me hungry but, for pizza. For I know, lunch. now I'm hungry for pizza too. But I love that. I love that part. Um, tell me, your what is your favorite book? I mentioned I would ask you your favorite book. It's got to be a Stephen King book, right? Well, well. <laughs> I, I have a lot of Stephen King books I like, but after a period of time, I really started thinking, you know, like I like reading for entertainment, but maybe I should read something that could help me become a better person. And so I got into nonfiction and one of the first book, books that I read was called You're a Badass. Oh, yes. That's and I'm a sure great you've book. seen it. It's yes. the yellow book. You yes. can get it at all at airports anywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, I read it, and it really just gave me a different outlook in terms of, you know, um, back to that believe from earlier. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying like, oh, you know, I want to do this. It's really like, okay, like I'm going to do this. Like today I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do this and I'm driving to work and I'm going to do this. And really just giving yourself that, you know, cheerleader. Yes. And that self -talk. so that, that, yeah, yes. that, that book really helped me with that. And I've since read a lot of other um, books like that to motivate myself. And I feel like reading that book was a start of me really wanting to have my own practice. And prior to that, I was like, oh, you know, I'll just work for someone else and work my way up. But that book was the beginning of me shifting into, I want to have my own practice. And I right. want to pay other people. I want to help other people with their careers. Oh, and I so, love that. So that's the book. And a good Sorry reminder. Sorry for bad words. No, you're podcast. good. You're good. We're, we're adults here. Uh, we can take it. I'm going to say it again. Don't forget, you're a badass. <laughs> so that's a great book. And it is something that is so important. In the in, in no matter what stage of career you're in, or if you're a business owner, or if you're not a business owner, you got to believe that every day when you go into work, that you're going to go do the best that you can do. And, and there's going to be a benefit at the end of the day to someone to or to yourself. And you got to believe it. If you don't believe it, 
It's not going to happen. Yeah. I love that. Well, we are running out of time, Stephanie. I I can't, I told you to go by fast. Yeah. It's like half an hour, just like that. Uh, Before we go though, we always like to close out our show by, um, first of all, by talking about a nonprofit that you believe in. Is there a nonprofit organization in town that you would like us to make a donation on your behalf? You know what? I have not found any local ones yet. So we can we can pick so one. You we can have pick one. Tell me ones that you would pick. You got well. There are so many wonderful nonprofits, and I'll I'll talk about a couple that we have poured into. Um, first of all, the YMCA, the local YMCA, is amazing, and they all of our kids have done some sports at some point at the YMCA, okay. and great great organization. And I love that you can go anywhere in the country, and there's a YMCA, and you can walk in and go. Hey, I want to work out today, or I'd like to, you know, can can my son play basketball today? With is there a game going on? And so it's a great, it's you know about the physical health and and great organization, uh, centers for families and children, another fantastic organization that I love. Uh, there's so many Casa of West Texas, another amazing organization, Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, I could. Oh, I could go on and on about our nonprofits. And you know what? As you were talking, I actually did think of one that I would like. um, The Aphasia Center here. Aphasia Center. Fantastic. Yeah. So I've worked with a few of their um, speech therapists. Uh Uh-huh. And we uh, we went to their uh, chocolate covered decadence this yes. year, and such a great event. You know, yes. when I worked in the hospital, you know, recognizing your ability to talk is huge, mm-hmm. and so you know, hearing the stories of those people there, and you know, the the therapists that I've worked with, and the stories that they've shared. That would be the organization I would like. Fantastic. Then that's where it'll go. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your story. And I know that we could talk pelvic health and health all <laughs> day, day long. long. And there's so many more questions. If you have any questions, please give Stephanie a call. Go to Inertia Health and Wellness. They're on Facebook, on LinkedIn. You can reach out to Stephanie. Um, do you want to give your phone number out? Sure. Okay. She's going to give the phone number out to call and make an appointment. Or you can text. Or text. Yes, we like we text. We don't have our front desk person yet. <laughs> um, it's 432 um, I can also be reached via email, Stephanie Pelvic PT or Inertia Pelvic PT at Gmail. Fantastic. And in closing, is there anything that we didn't get to talk about that you're like, oh, I really hope we get that out about uh, inertia or, or stretching or pelvic floor? Is there anything we didn't get to talk about that you're like, I really hope they get to hear this today? I think not waiting you know so many people come and see me with you know 20 years of chronic pain or i've been peeing my pants for 30 years or you know five years or just not prioritizing yourself and it's so easy especially as women especially as Mm -hmm. mothers is to always put everyone else first so true and so i just really want to empower you if you've been thinking about it or maybe you know this is the third time peeing your pants you know when your coughing and sneezing has come up to just reach out and you know There's a lot of information on my website, and Mm -hmm. we also have a lot of Google reviews where you can read other people's experiences and and use that to gauge, you know, is this going to be the right fit for me? And remember, it's common, not normal. So they can call you and you can help them. Common, not normal. You can help them. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for sharing your time, your story. I love what you're doing. Thanks for helping our community. And we wish you much continued success with your business. I know it's going to just continue to grow and grow. And uh, we appreciate you focusing on our health here in West Texas. So thank you. you. I'm really glad to be here in West Texas. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for listening today. I want to thank our sponsors. I've got a lot of thank yous, right? Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, Rig ID Workwear, also join joincapclub.com. If you're looking for hats, joincapclub.com is the best way to get your monthly delivery service to you with your company logo on it. Also, you can go to Midland Cap and Cup and they can help you with all your caps and cups. I think that's it for today. Thank you for your time. Uh, Remember, we are your biggest cheerleader here at the Chris Escamilla Show. We want you to achieve all your dreams and goals. So remember my motto is dream big, believe in yourself and never give up. You make it a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.